Hi everyone, uh, Mark here from Kenzie Meets. Uh, welcome to the our latest vlog. This one takes a step change. We decided to do some filming uh, round about Cumbernauld, and we took in the locations for the film Gregory's Girl, uh, released in 1981. Filmed on a budget of 500 pounds. Quite. Amazing, really, when you think about it, five hundred pounds nowadays would probably get you nothing. But back then, they filmed a whole film for five hundred pounds. Uh, as I say, released in nineteen eighty one, I believe it grossed approximately twenty six thousand pounds in the box office, which is quite a return, really, when you think about it. And then, obviously, it's, it's grown into the cult classic that we know today. Uh, most of the actors in the film. Kind of that was their claim to fame, being in Gregory's Girl. But some of them have, have went on. Obviously, the lead actor John Gordon Sinclair, or Gordon John Sinclair, whichever way around. Uh, I believe his his name is Gordon John Sinclair in real life, and he changed it to John Gordon Sinclair to meet the equity uh, criteria purely because I believe there was another Gordon John Sinclair in the in equity at the time, Claire Grogan and uh, Dee Hepburn all went on to star in further things. Uh, Claire Grogan, most famous for Auto Images, uh, her musical band. Uh, Dee Hepburn went on to Crossroads, which is a famous uh, British soap uh, back in the, the 80s. Uh, and John Gordon Sinclair went on to do television work and theatre work. So regularly seen on British televisions. Uh, Andy McCann I believe went on to be, went behind the camera uh, and went back into theatre and I'm not sure about the rest of the cast to be fair. Uh, Douglas Sanakin I believe was in a few things. He was in Comfort and Joy. He was in River City as well most recently uh, and uh, as I say the other Actors have been kind of jobbing about, or if not, they've, they've left the, the acting trade behind and, and went back into normality. But they'll always be famous for being in Gregory's Girl. So, Gregory's Girl is quintessentially a, a whimsical look at the teenage love life of a Glaswegian schoolboy where filmed in Cumbernauld which is on the outskirts of Glasgow and was created as part of a development uh, Cumbernauld, Drumchapel, Castlemilk uh, were all kind of created to accommodate the Glasgow overspill so Glasgow had become too heavily populated they created these towns to kind of capture the Glasgow overspill as they call it uh, a lot of towns round about the kind of uh, Glasgow were made in that same way. They were kind of they started off as villages and they became towns because town planners moved in and started moving people from Glasgow out to these areas. Uh, so this film is set in Cumberland. All the filming it was actually I mean, when we started filming when we started looking at the locations we started filming it. It was actually quite amazing how 
og sjálfur þú voru því ekki alla Ég hafði þetta vorum fæði fann þetta til að ekki gæti between different filming points Svo það var skýrt það var við, really close, all pretty easy to find Difficult we be in, obviously the film was made in 1981 This is 2023, so we are now 42 years later and the ravages of time have obviously taken place and some areas are no longer there the, the, the high school is gone you'll see that uh, from the videos that we've shot that it's gone, it's no longer there it was uh, demolished in 2014 I believe uh, the, the nurses college which opens the film is no longer there, you'll see from the videos uh, later on here in this vlog that it's no longer there, it's made way for apartments but most of the other areas are still there uh, slightly different, obviously they were newer back then in 1981 but uh, still there and uh, I hope you enjoy it so stay tuned and keep watching Thank you very much. So, those of you that know the film, this is the opening scenes. The guys are in the woods spying on the nurses' college, uh, nurses undressing accordingly. Uh, so, this scene here will go to the current scene, oh, and unfortunately, it's no longer there. And unfortunately, the, the starting scenes of this film are no longer here. They seem to have been knocked down to build these flats. So I suspect this is where the, the nurses college, or what used to be the SSEB house in CIFA was. It's no longer here. Uh, I think, looking at these bushes up here, that's probably where they filmed from. Gregory and Andy etc were all in the bushes looking back at the nurses college here but unfortunately that's what 40 years of progress does and it's now houses oh well you can still get here though you can still see that we were on the bit of land that started the film and here we are Gregory and Andy on the bridge uh, Gregory's explaining what he'll do if Andy get kicked off, is kicked off the football team. Andy utters the immortal line uh, and we move to the location as it stands today. It's a well known fact that 12 tons of corn plates go underneath this bridge every day. This is us, Andy and his pal Charlie, I think, uh, are walking under the underpass basically heading towards school in the morning. Uh, we get a short glimpse of it here, circular. Uh, the, the next scene I think we can see the end. Here's D. Hepburn's introduction into the film. Yeah, and this scene we can see the end of the end of the tunnel with the with the staircase at the end, and then we'll move to the, the location as it stands. Here we are at the underpass. You see quite clearly in the film stairs at the other end. Andy talking to the workman, talking about how to get girls. So a few shots of the playing fields that we see throughout the film and the building itself, uh, unfortunately the building no longer stands and the playing fields have been left to become overgrown so it's just the nature of it, you know, that's progress for you so uh, we'll 
go to the scene as it stands. So here's D and Mr Menzies and then we move to the scene. And this is what's left of the school and the playing fields. It's fenced off, not done. I think they were making way for new housing but it doesn't seem to have became anything. So this is where the school was. Not down. Nothing here anymore. Same. And I think, as I said, I think it was meant to be housing. We're not down for new housing, but nothing's happened yet. So, who knows? Maybe we'll come back again and it'll be all changed again. And there was the scene where Gregory's driving instructor dad and one of his pupils as he turns the corner. He's confronted with Gregory in the middle of the road and he proceeds to nearly knock him down. So this is all filmed on Blackthorn Road and Morse Road and it shows signs of significant development in the last 42 years. So we move to the, the current site uh, after this picture. So this is us, this, we're driving up Blackthorn Road, coming on to Morse Road. This is the bit where Gregory, Gregory's dad, just here, Gregory's crossing the road, Gregory's dad nearly knocks him down. So this is Morse Road and he cuts through the trees on the left hand side here. Now here's the, the famous St Enoch's clock which sat, was part of the St Enoch's Hotel in Glasgow in St Enoch's Square. When that was demolished it was moved to Cumbernauld Shopping Centre as a place to, to store it. Uh, it subsequently been moved out of the main part of the building and into a stairwell which is currently closed for renovation. So no access, so I lifted these images from www.lostglasgow.com Hope he doesn't mind, or hope they don't mind. Uh, yeah, so currently there's a battle ongoing between Glasgow and Cumbernauld as to oh, who owns the clock. Uh, Glasgow want it back, they want to put it in a prominent site. Cumbernauld say it's theirs, the usual. So here's some images of it. And here's an in the hotel where it was sited previously. And I believe this is where it's currently sited, uh, in a, a stairwell. So this is Gregory meeting Carol. Carol is sent to tell him that Dorothy's not going to make it. They then decide to go for a bag of chips. They walk towards the chip shop. Carol sees a, a, a phone box, an old red phone box, and decides to pop in and change, much to Gregory's alarm. So we then move to the current site of the... Phone box. So this is about where Gregory's met Carol at the clock tower or the clock face in the city centre and the shopping centre. And then she starts to she jumps out of the phone box and the phone box is probably there. And walk up that street. She jumps into the phone box, changes her clothes, and then they walk on to meet the next girl. And Gregory and Carol walk off towards the shopping centre and the chip shop. And here they are at the chip shop. Uh, this is where Carol has arranged to meet Margot, who takes Gregory on to the second part is uh, date. None of this greenery is here anymore, it's all gone. Uh, they've changed the seating in that main kind of bit to a more modern style. Uh, here's Margot on the left hand side. She then takes Gregory, she goes and gets a bag of chips and takes Gregory for a walk to his final destination. We can see Andy and Charlie there and this is where it's decided that 
Gregory is probably going to head for the country park. And we move to the location as it is. So here we are looking back at the chip shop. Look at Gregory buys Carol chips. Then he meets Margot and heads off in that direction. This is where he decides that it's a great night to go to the country park. I believe it's that chip shop in the middle, the trio, was the chip shop that they used for filming. It's slightly changed in the middle here. That would have been more greenery. And we finally meet Susan, the orchestrator of it all. She has with the help of her friends, Dorothy, Carol and Margot, got Gregory out on a date with her. Uh, we find these houses, they're quite distinctive, wooden slats with, with pebble-dashed uh, sides to them. And here come Margot and Gregory down the road to meet Susan for their date. So this is where Gregory meets Susan. You can see these stairs there. There's the white building behind it and the brown building. So probably at some point there was a ball art here somewhere on this pavement here. And this is where he comes and meets Susan. And we can line that up in the picture I'll show you. So here's Gregory and Susan heading down between the houses towards the country park, as they call it. And we get a first glimpse of the country park. So a lot of people thought it was Palace Rig that this was filmed in, but realistically, this is actually Cumbernauld House Park that we see here. Uh, Donna and I went and filmed here and actually I think we get mixed up. There's two large trees that you can kind of place and I think we were looking at the first one which is closest to the houses but in actual fact I think the filming is done at the furthest away one looking back at the houses. This scene here I think is at the, close, the, the tree nearest the houses and then when they're doing their horizontal dancing here they're further into the park and you can look back and see the houses in the distance and that big tree that they're sitting to at previously. So, but I'll let you enjoy the scenes. It's a nice park, definitely worth stopping at, get along, have a wee look. Uh, they meet Eric, he's away to do the flesh tone test at the nurses college uh, and you can see the path running through the park as well and this is us. Getting towards the end of the day, Gregory's obviously got a curfew and Susan decides to walk him home. So this is come on Old House Park. So this is where Susan and Gregory come on their date. And they meet Eric, because Eric's away up to do a flesh tone test at the nurses college and then they do some horizontal dancing it was just lying under one of these trees so it could be that one there or it's probably more likely to be that one in the distance I think a lot of people think it was actually filmed at Palace Rig but this is the actual park and if you actually look at it, most of the filming locations were all within probably a mile of each other. It's a lovely wee space considering it's right in the heart of it. Well, there's the, the M80 in the distance there. It's kind of industrial over the back of the trees there. There's a housing estate behind us, but it's surprisingly quiet. about here in his white jacket wearing a Susan's berry asking what her favourite drink would be so after some keen deduction work by my filming assistant Donna we believe this is a tree that they were doing the horizontal dancing under 
with these houses in the background. Now, if I'm correct, these houses here also were the where Phil Menzies was seen in his greenhouse talking to his plants. So realistically we've got three filming locations. We've got Phil Menzies' house, which is one of these ones. We've got where Susan has plotted to meet Gregory, which is over behind those houses there. And then we've got this part here where they spent their day in this tree where they did their horizontal dancing. So within the space here, quarter of a mile, you've got four mobile locations. So no wonder they managed to do it on such a cheap budget. It's the tree. Yeah. So thanks for watching. Uh, there's still plenty of filming locations out there. I might go back and have a look and see what we can find. Uh, but yeah, enjoyable. You'll notice, you'll have noticed that I filmed those locations over two days. Uh, glorious sunshine one day, drizzly rain the other day. So uh, I took stock. We were going out, uh, did a couple decided to come back again the weekend after and filmed another couple so if you like what we're doing hit the subscribe button helps with the channel helps to promote the videos uh, gets us a wider audience as well and if you like what we're doing then hit the like button let us know what videos you like and hit the notification button so that you know any other videos that are coming out all right so thanks very much for watching and I'll see you again soon.